race fans, welcome back to the Snowman Cycling YouTube channel. I am Jake Sanderson, your favourite stick-thin sprinter. And in this week's episode, we're going to look at a pretty chaotic race that I did on Queen's Highway After Party in Yorkshire. And this was an interesting one because it had a lot of attacks flying left, right and centre. Some of them good, some of them bad, and only one of them that actually stuck. So I thought this would be a really good opportunity to take a look at when and where you should attack, when is a good spot to attack, when is a bad spot to attack, and how you can use that to your advantage to win races. So let's dive into this one and have a look at exactly what I'm talking about. And this Queen's Highway After Party is a route that I've never done before. It's a route only event, which means you can only do it in races or group rides. And that one involves five laps of the Queen's Highway Loop, followed by a finish of the Yorkshire KOM Reverse. So a summit finish with a nice punchy climb to finish on. So I knew this one was probably going to be fairly eventful and fairly exciting, and it did not disappoint. It was actually pretty quiet until this moment when Tucker decided he was going to be the first one to launch an attack off the front. He doesn't go particularly hard, he doesn't get particularly much of a gap, but he does clearly push the pace and he does manage to get a little bit of a break over the riders behind. And when we talk about attacking and why you should be attacking, there's two reasons to attack. One of those reasons should be to get away and get off the front and get a gap from everybody else. And the other reason would be to get rid of riders in the group and try and drop them from the group that you're in. So that should always be the aim. You should never senselessly attack. You should always be trying to either get away or get rid of people from the group that you're in. And as we can see from this, Tucker's initial attack was sort of picked up and carried on by Sorensen and Moorfoot. And they have actually managed to drop Martinov, one of the riders, off the back. So I'm going to call that not the best attack in the world, but it wasn't totally senseless. They did manage to get rid of one of the riders in the group. So we're going to score that a half-decent attack. But in honesty, that rider probably is already in difficulty and probably wouldn't be there at the end anyway. So you may not necessarily need to attack to get rid of them there. You might want to save that energy for a little bit later on when we're a little bit close to the finish rather than going so early. And Martinov actually does quite a good job of pushing the pace to try and keep that gap minimal and get back on. He's doing fairly decent power and it seems that Morfoot and Tucker realised that and so they elected to go hard off the front again. String this group out a little bit more, cause some further gaps and they actually do manage to get a bit of a gap there to Sorensen off the back but that's another thing with these attacks that you need to keep in mind if you are going to do one of these attacks you kind of need to keep it at a sustained pace keep the power on for a little while if you just sort of accelerate do a little surge everybody will kind of do the same ripple effect behind you and then what you see happens is what happens here which is the rider that got dropped is able to come back and not only come back but they're able to plow through with their momentum causing the person that made the initial attack to have to chase so that meant that they made their own life harder than it needed to be. So in my books, that's a bad attack. They didn't drop anybody. They didn't get away. They just used energy that they didn't necessarily need to use at this point. But don't worry because that's not the end of the attacks yet. Morfoot decides that he's going to keep pushing the pace on the front hit whilst the riders are a little bit suffering behind. And this is a much better time to attack when people have just sort of caught back on and are just trying to rest and get a little bit of recovery. The rise comes up and he elects to push it. He gets a little bit of a gap and it forces the riders behind to have to chase. So I think that's a much better attack than the previous one. And everything Think strings out quite a bit here as we sort of hit that descent. Riders are trying to get the riders around them to do the work so they don't have to be the ones that bridge up. And perhaps Morfoot has learned a little bit this time because he keeps the power on a bit more sustained. He gets a bit of help from Tucker and all of a sudden, before we know what's happened, Sorensen has been dropped off the back. So that's how you make that attack work better than the previous one. Keep the power on a little bit more sustained. Pick your shots a little bit better and you can get rid of riders that are already hurting. So that one was definitely better, I have to say. And at this point, I'm thinking, are the attacks going to keep flying? Is everybody just going to keep hitting it up every single rise like has happened so far? But we do get a little bit of a breather. It seems that people have tired themselves out a little bit. And they've probably got one eye on that KOM finish at the end. I know I certainly do. And I know my plan for that one is going to be to try and counter these attacks, try and patrol when people try to get away off the front. And if everything goes to plan, I'll still be in the front group at around 500 metres to go on the KOM. And that's when I am going to launch it with everything I've got, try and attack myself as hard as I can. But as we can see here, we've got a new contender. Yan Ming is the, makes their first attack off the front in this entire race. And it's a good one. They've done this really, really well. They've kept their powder dry. They've stayed at the back of the pack when they needed to be. And then when it's time and they've sensed weakness, they've come to the front. They've hit a really sustained, powerful attack. And they've managed to drop Tucker off the back of this group. And Masan Kim is also in difficulty. So we have to say a great attack there from Yang Ming. Unfortunately for them, I am really focused on my job, like I said, of patrolling those attacks and making sure that people cannot get away off the front. And you might be thinking, well, why are you patrolling these attacks? And why are you not attacking yourself? Well, the answer is 
just pretty simple. I just don't have the matches, I don't have the energy, I don't have the power to do repeated attacks like this. I know that I'm still not fit at the minute, I know my heart rate's still really high post long COVID, and it means that I really have to pick my shots and pick my attacks really, really carefully. And if I attack halfway through this race and blow up, I've kind of thrown it away because realistically, as the rider probably with the best sprint in this group, my best path to victory is gonna be in the final minute or two here. So it makes sense to counter these moves, patrol these attacks, and then if we get a chance and we're at the front of this race with a little bit of a distance to go on that KOM, that's when we'll launch our big attack. And like I say, rather than attacking over and over again, you should pick your moments for one or two big attacks and use the rest to counter the other moves. And as Yang Ming gets brought back there, another half decent attack, just probably trying to keep Tucker at bay, but didn't really achieve too much. And it looks like Morefoot here is electing to keep his tempo and keep the pace fairly high to stop Tucker getting back on easily and also Masan. But as we said before, you've got to be careful not to burn too much energy when you're doing that because as we can see, Tucker is back from the dead and not just that, he plows through the group using his momentum. And I really like this attack. I think that was beautifully timed, very well done. And he had to do it because he was suffering off the back. He'd had to use a lot more energy than everybody else. So he had to sort of turn the tables on them there and try and make everybody else chase. It didn't stick and it didn't work but it made the people behind have to chase so I thought that was a pretty decently timed attack there from him especially when you factor in that he probably isn't going to win the sprint finish based on what I saw on Zwift power and also that he's been off the back so he's probably already really really hurting and just has to take these chances to try and see if maybe he can get away at this point and as we see here, that's what he decides to do again. So I don't fault him for this. It's not the best attack in the world, but he kind of has no choice here. He's just going to have to sort of go as hard as he can with everything he's got and try and hope that he gets rid of a couple of riders from the back of this group. But unfortunately for him, once again, like the other riders here, I'm patrolling these attacks and making sure that nobody gets away off the front of this group unless I come with them. And I thought that at 3k to go, we might get a bit of recovery here as everybody sort of has one eye on the KOM, but not to be. Morefoot decides that he wants to push the pace once again, so I decide I'll come with him. I'll even give him a little bit of a turn, seeing as we've got a bit of a gap over the chasers behind. But I realise that that isn't going to stick, so therefore I am not going to pull anymore. If he wants to pull and keep the pace high, he's welcome to. I'll just sit on the wheel like the other riders and hopefully get a bit of a toe to the KOM start. And at this point, I'm thinking the group has come back together, everybody's rejoined, but Morefoot has other ideas. And it seems that this time he is going to keep the pace really high and he is going to keep his power really sustained. And that's going to cause chaos in the chasing group behind. As we can see, riders are using their power-ups, but that gap just keeps opening, opening. And I realise that I'm going to have to bridge across to him. I can't let him get away. And I'm not sure that the riders behind have got the gas to chase. So I'm going to have to power onto Morefoot's wheel. I'm not going to give him a turn here. I don't think there's much need to give him a turn. I'm not particularly worried about the riders behind recatching and beating us in the sprint on the KOM. But instead, if he can get us to the start of that KOM with a bit of a gap and a bit of a buffer, then maybe I can get a bit of recovery in here and we can put our plan into effect of going at about 500 metres to go. And fair play to Morefoot here, much credit to him. He just doesn't care that I'm on his wheel. He still elects to just go as hard as he can, try and keep that gap, try and get it into the base of the KOM. And as we hit the base of the KOM, he's done a really good job, but Masan has done a fantastic job to close that gap that was over 50 metres at one point on that descent and has managed to join up with the rest of the group. And it also looks like Yang Ming and Tucker are going to join the party. They're not too far behind either. They've done a really good job of managing to bridge up. And all of a sudden, that group, we had a fairly decent gap there at about two kilometres to go. And before we know it, we're on the KOM and everybody's back together again. So Morefoot must be pretty disheartened by that. I'm not too concerned at this point. Because like I said, if those riders were too much of a concern, they would have come with us and they probably had to burn a lot of gas to get back on. And as we hit the 600 meter marker to go and we start to approach the steep part of this climb, as promised, this is when I'm going to hit my first attack of the entire race. I come to the front and I hit it with everything I've got, use my power up and we're just going to start to grind it out, see if anybody comes with me. I don't want to leave it too late and give them a chance to sort of come with us. I'm going to have to try and crack them and crack them early. And as we can see here, Morefoot is the one that's doing everything he can to try and get on and he's giving a valiant chase with Yang Ming just behind but they probably aren't going to have the gas at this point to manage to get onto the wheel. And I can sense weakness. And I know I just have to crack 
on here with everything I've got. If I ease up a little bit and take it easy, then it's going to give the guys behind hope. You almost want to be cooked with nothing left to go at like 200, 150 metres. And if the gap's good enough, that'll probably be enough to coast to the finish. But we're OK here. I can see that the riders behind have sort of given up a little bit. They've cracked. We've managed to sort of dishearten them and they've given up. So I elect here to start the celebrations early. Roll out my arsenal of absolutely terrible over-the-top celebrations. Is that the time? Yes, it's time that I got some new celebrations. And at this point, I think it would be a really cool, fun thing to do, like the pros do, to get off and walk the bike over the line. But I made a mistake here, which is that I didn't have enough speed and I ground to a halt. So really rookie mistake there. Don't look like a total douchebag like me. Get off your bike to celebrate, then have to get back on again in a nine-man C category Zwift race. But hey, all's fair in love, war and Zwift racing, as they say. Snow Zoo's the art of Zwifting. And fair play to my fellow racers for making that an exciting one. We really had to keep our wits about us at all times. So I hope you learned something from that one. Let me know in the comments. Do you agree? Do you have different thoughts? Do you like to attack in other moments? Thank you as always for watching. Hope to catch you on the next one. Remember to like, comment, share. Most importantly, subscribe. And as always, race fast, ride hard. And remember that you are appreciated.